Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Please share where you're from, um, where you're joining us from, what the weather's like, what you're hoping to learn. Share with us in the chat box. Hey, Suzanne from Canada, Lucy from Vermont, Christopher from Arizona. Uh, I bet the weather's nicer in Arizona than it is here. I'm in New Jersey. And Jared from Arizona, oh, 98 degrees. It is rainy and like 50 in New Jersey. Hello, Ella from North Carolina. Alabama. April from Virginia. Man, I'm jealous of all the nice weather. Tucson, LA. We're gonna get started in a few minutes, give people a little bit of time to sign on. Has anybody heard of Coder Z? In just a couple of exciting minutes, I'm going to tell you how I heard about Coder Z. I know you're all super excited. Nice. New for me. I really need to talk to Simon about uh, getting our little introductory music back on here, don't I? If you're all used to, um, Adobe Connect webinars. You remember the, hey Steven, um, you remember that that little ditty that used to be on at the beginning of webinars? We need that music back. Whew. Steven is joining us from Chicago area. He's with me on the STEM leadership team and he is going to be our new uh, co co chair. We're still calling us chairs, right? <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. One more month, and then you take over. It will definitely, it's going to be tons of fun. Okay, so again, I wanted to welcome everybody to our webinar this evening. Um, if you're just joining us, we're just getting started, so you really haven't missed anything yet. Um, so please, whenever you're able to join, um, just check in, let us know where you're joining us from. 
um, and welcome to Inclusiveness and Equity in STEM Cyber Robotics Coding Competition with CoderZ and the ISTE STEM Network. Um, I am Jessica Shupik. I am the soon to be outgoing co-chair for the STEM Network. Um, Julie, uh, my other co-chair, should be joining us soon. We also have our incoming co-chair, Stephen, with us, and possibly Charles will join us later. Um, but we love putting together webinars like this for you all, um, especially when we run across organizations and companies like Intellitech uh, who put together stuff like Coder Z and CRCC. Uh, so I was walking around the Expo Center, I think two ISTEs ago, and I did a little backtrack because I saw um, some drag and drop coding and I saw some robots and I was like, what is this? I need to learn more about it. Um, so I went back and I was lucky enough to meet Ido Yerushalmi, uh, who is the CEO. And so he talked to me a little bit about this program um, that does virtual robotics. Um, this really spoke to me because at the time I worked in a school where um, we couldn't afford, not that I work in a school now where we can afford robots, but I worked in a school where we couldn't afford robots, um, but my students were very interested in robotics and coding. Um, so I wanted to learn more about how to get involved. So um, I was super excited about learning more. Um, but like I do at most ISTEs, I put Ido's information into my folder OISTE stuff and then put it to the side. And I just found it a few months ago when I was sorting through all of my ISTE stuff. And I said, man, I wish I hadn't taken so much time because everybody needs to hear about this. Um, so that's how we are bringing CRCC and Coder Z to you. Um, and I'm gonna let Ido tell you more about this, um, but it is really cool. Um, and I will be here to answer some of your questions in chat. Um, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you go to their website, which I'm gonna drop in the chat in just a minute, um, to learn more about Coder Z and CRCC. Um, so Ido? Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And please tell us more. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, hi, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Ido Yerushalmi. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, Intellitech. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today to tell you about uh, inclusiveness and equity in STEM through the cyber robotics coding competition. Um, just a little bit about uh, uh, Intellitech before um, I, I move forward. So Intellitech is a company that is uh, a developer of curriculum for technology for the past 35 years. Um, and we develop all kinds of programs if it's for the world of CTE as well as the world of STEM and many programs in uh, robotics. And that's a great uh, uh, way for us to have a good insight and background as to what's going on um, in the uh, market today and how schools are, are uh, implementing uh, programs of, of, of this kind. So this is uh, uh, really the background. So I'll be happy to share uh, what we've done. And then uh, um, I look forward to collaborating with um, with ISTE affiliates throughout the country, because I think that there's a lot that we could do together. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to some of these conversations uh, later on. So the first question that, you know, kind of uh, I want to pose is why cyber robotics coding competition? And um, it's, it's really nice to, to answer a question by another question. So I'm, I'm going to kind of pop this up and ask what industry will not be impacted by automation in the next 10 to 15 years, or even sooner than that. And I think that that is really what kind of guides us 
uh, to understand uh, uh, or, or to kind of think of how important it is that we will have more options for um, uh, uh, for schools and for uh, students uh, to immerse themselves in technological education. And I would say even more at, at, to, to do that at a younger age, not to do that when they're already in high school and they're already biased and, and think that it's not for them or that they're not good in math, but to do it at a younger age that they can really explore and see if, if, they, if they have a calling in this, if they, if they like this uh, area, and if they want to proceed and, um, and uh, find a pathway that they can grow in. And this is, you know, when I think of robotics today, um, in, in a typical uh, a middle school, um, I think of a, of a relatively limited program uh, that has, uh, this could be a club, uh, or it could be uh, an engineering classroom, um, and um, it would probably be limited by, you know, a, a successful program would have 20, 30 students, and, and the limitations would be uh, the amount of kits that you could get uh, uh, to the school. Um, it's, it, it's becoming more and more difficult to find and to train teachers in this area because some, you know, some of these programs are highly specialized and, and not a lot of teachers uh, necessarily like to, to spend all this time and, and, um, and uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's really hard work to, to, to kind of uh, uh, teach some of these programs. And also not all schools uh, in, in all states have uh, the time in their schedule to be able to, um, uh, um, to uh, uh, implement such programs. And, and a lot of the times when we talk to schools, they say, yeah, we're thinking of uh, uh, you know, having this in two years, but right now we, we don't have anything. Maybe we'll start with an after school program. So it, it, these are all the kind of, of, of limitations. So to answer the, 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 the why, we really want to deal with what we call the other 99%. We don't want, you know, there are some fortunate uh, schools and, and, and some fortunate uh, kids that have access to, um, uh, to the uh, robotic clubs and to, um, uh, to engineering classes. But uh, if we agree that robotics uh, is more of a mainstream uh, uh, um, topic and we want to see how we can scale and have more access, we want to see classrooms more like this where we can use our existing infrastructure, namely our computers and our internet, to get more and more, more, and more students uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, robotics. And this is what we're trying to do with Coder Z and the Cyber Robotics uh, um, Coding Competition, um, basically uh, to lead to uh, tech literacy and, and, and to, to more 21st century skills. So just to recap, um, our vision is that today only 1% of students uh, experience coding with robots. Uh, we're looking to serve the other 99%. Uh, we want to build, build highways to STEM, and we want to promote STEM awareness, confidence, and, and efficacy uh, uh, through a fun uh, activity that students will go through. And then hopefully afterwards, they will look for other uh, pathways um, and, and find more interest uh, uh, in STEM. The values that we're promoting are real life coding skills and tech literacy, uh, inclusiveness, that's very important for us and that's part of the, uh, uh, the statement that we uh, laid forth in the, in the title of the webinar, uh, uh, to have as many students uh, um, uh, uh, able to participate. Um, and that is something that having a web tool allows us to do because there is no limitation. All you have to have is, is, uh, is access to the internet and, and the simplest of Chromebooks and you're good to go. Uh, diversity, we see that uh, through our program, we're able to encourage uh, uh, diversity and to have uh, uh, participation, uh, a much higher participation of, of females and of uh, uh, different minorities. Uh, we're able to measure outcomes uh, uh, because we're using an internet tool. And um, uh, I think that this is something that uh, uh, is very different from a lot of the project-based learning that we have been used to promoting 
uh, which is great on the one hand, but uh, um, there's always either a successful project or an unsuccessful project, but we're not necessarily looking at the outcomes of learning of each individual student. And that is something that um, a tool uh, uh, um, that we're using can allow us to do. And we can learn from that and, and improve uh, the program from, uh, uh, from the data that we're collecting. And finally, uh, uh, we're able to discover a lot of talent through the competition. Uh, a lot of kids that, that uh, have had no prior uh, experience whatsoever and that really find uh, uh, coding something fun and are able to solve problems and are looking uh, for the next uh, challenge ahead. So this is what we're uh, trying to uh, achieve through the, the competition. Um, so the competition was launched in 2017. Uh, we've already uh, held it uh, in, in three continents, so multicultural uh, uh, experience. Uh, we've partnered with Oracle Academy, with uh, Yaskawa Motoman, the robotics company, uh, Cisco, NBT, uh, Air Force Association, NASA, USA, Science Engineering Festival, and others. Uh, so we've had uh, 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 some nice backing to, to get us started. Um, what's been great is really the, the, the flexibility here of the, uh, uh, the implementation. So there is no need to buy any hardware. Uh, uh, again, it, you know, I, I can't uh, uh, reiterate this enough that just the Chromebook and uh, uh, internet accessibility and uh, you're good to go. And the other thing about flexibility is that we realize that um, the schedule is usually a limitation. Uh, um, so uh, the competition is something that can be run as an in-school program. It could be run as an after-school program. Uh, we've had homeschoolers. We've had students in schools that the school did not uh, uh, that just notify the students that this uh, option is available and that the students uh, continued on their own. Uh, so it's just there, and if you have access, you can go ahead and try it, um, and, and that's the whole point. Uh, we don't want to have a definition of you must be in a class or you must be in, in some sort of, of, of program. Uh, uh, if, if you want to uh, participate, sign up and, and participate. These pictures kind of show the two extremes. On the left-hand side, we see a classroom that is kind of intensely working on solving these uh, uh, challenges, and, and this is in a, in, a, in a classroom environment. And on the right-hand side, we have a, a student that has gone home and is solving uh, uh, some of these challenges with his furry friend on the top of the seat there, uh, helping him out. Uh, and that's exactly uh, the kind of atmosphere or, or the flexibility that we'd like to, uh, um, uh, to allow in order to make this more inclusive and more accessible. So just a little bit of, of, of numbers um, of what we've done so far. We started off in, in the fall of 2017 uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the kind help of the Commissioner of Education in the state of New Hampshire. And we, uh, with notice of about three to four weeks, we set up a, a competition and we had 2,600 competitors come um, in, from, uh, uh, from the state. We then held uh, competitions in the spring in Israel where we had more than 19,000 students compete. Um, then we had uh, what we called the Greater DC competition um, uh, where we had 2,500 students, another uh, pilot in West Virginia, um, and then uh, smaller competitions in Nevada uh, Pennsylvania and south of Texas. In the summer of 2018, we really kind of uh, uh, took a test and, and, and wanted to see how much our software could hold. Uh, and we, 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 we didn't know uh, what uh, a surprise we were going to get because we thought that we'll have, uh, you know, just a few thousand students. It turned out that more than 30,000 students from Vietnam registered. Um, and that was a very good test for us to see that the software is, uh, knows how to scale and knows how to support uh, such uh, um, uh, large uh, groups of students. And now with the drum roll, we'll see what happened in 2018. 
we had participation just after one year, we moved from, <clears throat> from one state to uh, over 26 states in the US. Um, we had over 40,000 students enroll from 640 schools across the state. We actually held 11 uh, in-person finals uh, um, in, uh, uh, in certain states and were able to provide a very, very uh, uh, fun experience for lots of schools, teachers, uh, um, students, and parents um, uh, for, for something that, uh, you know, we felt um, that uh, uh, is going to bring them back year after year uh, to look for more uh, STEM challenges and to um, see how they can implement uh, this in, in a more formal way uh, in their schools. So it was a very uh, uh, encouraging uh, um, set of events. Um, and uh, we're kind of building a very close knit community in that, in that regard. So a few other interesting um, uh, kind of pieces of information that we can share from the, from the competition. So first, uh, you know, our, our, our data shows that one in every three players are, are girls. Well, that's actually a, a, a higher number because what we've seen is that a third of the players register as boys, a third of the player register as girls, and a third of the players register as not willing to, uh, um, uh, to, to disclose their, their gender. So um, that is, you know, our assumption is that uh, it's closer to one out of two players that, that are girls. Um, and that is uh, very encouraging because it, it means that uh, this environment is not threatening. It's not something that uh, uh, girls feel that they should uh, um, try to stay away from or, or, or feel uh, kind of un uninvited. And I think that the numbers, if you look at some of the, uh, of the physical robotics programs, you're not seeing the same numbers. You're seeing a much lower number of, of, uh, of participation uh, from, from female uh, um, uh, participants. The other um, factor here is that because we are dealing uh, also with a younger age of, of uh, middle schoolers, then uh, there is still uh, more, I would say, interest, less bias, less uh, uh, kind of uh, intimidation from, from trying these things. And uh, that's why we see um, a higher uh, number of participation of, uh, of girls. Uh, another nice uh, fact to share here is that we've had 33% participation of schools that uh, define themselves as rural. Um, I, I think that the smallest that I recall is a school in the very northern tip of New Hampshire that the entire school has 27 students. Um, and for them, this was a, a kind of a unique event because they, they haven't participated in, in other um, uh, types of events of, of, of this kind. And here they're able to compete uh, uh, at one time with all the, um, all the other schools in the state without having to, to travel uh, by, by doing this all virtually through the internet uh, and to feel that they're part of something uh, uh, of an important movement and that they're learning. So this is another kind of nice experience uh, uh, to share. 38% of schools had no computer science. Um, and, and I'll share the next one as well, which is 50, about 50% 50 of teachers had no experience teaching coding. So what's, what's important uh, uh, about this is that it shows us that the program is, um, uh, is very accessible. It has a lot of the tools that are needed by teachers to be able to uh, uh, get students to work in a self-directed way, uh, to feel confident, to be able to use the tools, um, uh, scaffolding, teacher guides, uh, uh, suggested solutions for teachers, uh, and, and a lot of other um, uh, uh, things that we've uh, uh, added to the software in order to make this a welcoming experience and, and to feel that it's something that they uh, wanna do uh, uh, over and over again. Uh, and through the surveys at the end of the year, we've seen that 98% uh, of the teachers that participated want to return and do this again, although they came with no experience because they felt that the engagement of the student and the motivation led them and they were able to uh, see this as, as a learning experience as well. 
and uh, they didn't feel that they were out of place or that they were kind of uh, put on the spot or something. So this is all kind of um, uh, data that we share from our from our experience with the uh, uh, with the competitions. Um, I'd like now to uh, introduce you to the platform that we use. Uh, so the platform that we use is called Coder Z. And uh, uh, the most important thing to, to uh, uh, mention about this is that it's online. And, and uh, the, the fact that it's online gives, it's all the, gives us and, 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 and this platform all of the advantages that can make the competition and learning such a great experience. Um, so first and foremost, what uh, uh, the platform does is it gives uh, an immersive 3D simulation. And through, through simulation, we can create uh, different types of um, environments, uh, which are, uh, uh, we call them missions or challenges that are gamified, um, and that students need to use code in order to solve these uh, uh, missions or challenges. So it's just like uh, um, uh, being in, in a, in a, in a uh, playing with a puzzle or playing with with uh, uh, um, uh, something that you need to to uh, resolve through uh, the use of code um, and uh, the simulation gives you two uh, important things here one is the ability to get feedback so you're learning through trial and error and the other is uh, the ability to collect information and to plan how you're going to solve your mission what you can see on the left hand side uh, you can see uh, um, that there are a lot of uh, um, different uh, parameters that you can see in the simulation. Uh, if it's uh, data from the from the from the sensors um, or different measurements, and and uh, you can use that in order to uh, um, write more accurate code. Um, the code editors. Uh, we start off with very basic uh, blocks. So students that have come from a background of uh, code.org or Scratch uh, find this to be uh, very intuitive for them and, and, and kind of an easy continuation. Having said that, we also uh, um, uh, want to offer this as a bridge to textual coding language. So as you can see on the left-hand side, you're, you're able to see uh, from the very beginning how each block looks in textual language in Java. Um, and if, uh, uh, um, if the student is interested or if, if the level uh, kind of uh, supports that, you're able to move and to uh, um, uh, edit the code in Java uh, alone. So, so th there is the flexibility of starting from very basic um, uh, blocks using Java as a translation and then moving uh, um, uh, to, to Java only. Um, Another uh, very cool feature that we've developed uh, as part of our constant communication with students and with uh, teachers and trying to see how to improve the platform is we've created something called a smart block. And that allows us to create functions uh, or to save functions uh, uh, with blocks. So if, for example, I am putting together a long piece of code with blocks and I wanna reuse that, I can save that piece of code as a, uh, as a smart block. And then whenever I, I need to use that again, I will just pull it back into my uh, uh, working environment and I will not need to drag and drop the same uh, blocks over and over again. Uh, and that can get me to think like a programmer and not to uh, continuously look through the menus of blocks and, and uh, do something repetitive without uh, 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 the ability to plan ahead and to make things more uh, more efficient. Um, the competition really adds uh, a lot of fun in kind of having this uh, uh, competitive spirit. So once you start a competition and you see your school on a leaderboard that is public, that uh, uh, you see versus other schools, uh, 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 what's what's been really, really nice is to go and visit some of these schools and uh, kids will go home, come back in the morning, and work really hard and continuously look to see whether the school has moved up in the, in the leaderboard, and they understand that there's a direct correlation between the, the effort and the amount of work that they 
uh, uh, put into their uh, uh, code and into solving missions. Um, it also creates a nice kind of camaraderie between the students as they uh, uh, assist each other. So more mission solved means higher score for the school. So there's a lot of peer to peer uh, work that goes on. Um, and it really kind of boosts the motivation uh, of learning um, and, and uh, uh, creates a fun atmosphere uh, uh, in the class and makes it much more of a, of a fun activity, uh, not necessarily of, of, of learning, but more of playing. Um, and, 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 and students are, are just having fun. I think that one of the nice stories to share is that when we um, announced the competition uh, uh, last year in the fall, uh, it, it took a lot of schools by surprise. And they said, well, we haven't planned for this, so we'll give it a try and we'll do it for a week or two and see what happens. And as they started the activity, the students would not let them move on to anything else. They said, we want to continue doing this. Uh, let's, and, and they just stuck around for the entire uh, uh, portion of the, of the competition. So uh, from our point of view, uh, getting students engaged and getting students interested in doing this is probably uh, the most important. We spoke about um, uh, the ability to measure outcomes and uh, uh, the fact that every student has uh, uh, an account and that everything is uh, web-based allows us to uh, do in-depth uh, real-time analytics of, of a lot of data. So the most obvious is, is, uh, is progress and uh, teachers can see exactly what is happening in the classroom. So uh, although students are, you know, kind of each one at their, at their own uh, desk or working in groups, uh, you're able to see exactly what, uh, uh, how, you know, how, how the class is progressing. And some of these tables you can uh, uh, share with the students. So one of the, um, one of the slogans that we, we're hearing more and more in schools is let's keep it green in the sense that let, let's keep all the progress together at the same pace and, and help each other to solve the missions. So that's uh, uh, kind of a nice way for teachers to see how the, the, the class is, is progressing. Uh, we can also see whether students are learning from the missions uh, or not. Sometimes uh, 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 a mission is designed in a way that we uh, we can look at the data and see that we haven't done a good job in designing the mission, that a lot of students are uh, making mistakes, which are uh, our fault as the game designer. So we go back to the drawing board, we change a few things in the game, and then we're able to make the experience smoother um, uh, through, and again, all this is done uh, uh, through the, um, through the uh, uh, data that we're collecting. So we're also able to improve the learning experience and, and uh, uh, make, make this uh, kind of a, a smoother uh, experience for, for students. And finally, we're also able to collect a lot of data on who's participating. Um, uh, uh, and this is all through forms that we're asking uh, teachers, schools uh, to fill out. We, 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 we can uh, see how, how much time people are spending on this. We can see, um, you, know, um, you know, gender uh, participation and, and, and additional information. And this is all, uh, you know, very valuable in understanding how to uh, improve and continue to, to see that this uh, uh, program uh, grows. The next thing I want to kind of share is, is what kind of topics we cover through, uh, through the competition. Um, so computer science topics, uh, uh, obviously the, the, the first and probably the strongest is computational thinking. Uh, uh, every mission uh, requires uh, students to, to kind of stop and, 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 um, and think uh, what, what is the, the way that they're going to solve this using code. They go through uh, a code structure and, and have to uh, uh, build that. Uh, work through variables, inputs and outputs, conditional logic, loops, functions. So they're able to achieve quite a lot through the uh, through the competition. Not all, all not all students will be able to get to the higher levels in their first year. Some will uh, uh, spend uh, such time that they were able to do uh, so many things, but uh, not necessarily understand functions. But a lot of them will come back for the second year and uh, will look to improve and look to kind of uh, get more uh, um, out of the next competition. 
Uh, next are mathematical topics. So there are a lot of uh, calculations that take place uh, as you're solving missions. Uh, um, some, some basic uh, geometry that is combined into some of these missions. So just understanding geometry of circles, polygons, ratios. Uh, so these are kind of things that, that will, uh, uh, students will encounter um, uh, in the missions. And all of this, again, is supported. So we, we take into account that we will, uh, at least in, in the first missions, we will refresh memory, uh, the memory of students and, and allow them to kind of look up through the help desk uh, um, and, and, and kind of get definitions if it's something that they're feeling uh, that they have difficulty with. Um, engineering topics, we touch upon uh, motor control, uh, touch sensor, gyro sensors, ultrasonic sensors, color sensors, and object manipulation using the robotic arm. So, you know, it will be very similar to what uh, you have in a, uh, uh, in, a, in a real robotic program, only virtual. We keep, at least in, in, at, at this level of the competition, we keep the, the robot, I would say, almost static. We don't uh, configure the robot too many times, but from time to time, we create missions where we switch around the positioning of some of the sensors and that will be the challenge. So students will say, hey, it's not working for me. And the reply will be, we'll take a look at how the robot is configured and see if you need to change something in your thought process. So uh, that is also something that we, um, that we look at. Um, and finally, soft skills. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, teamwork, students working together in order to help each other to, to solve uh, uh, the problems. There's a lot of strategy in, uh, in the competition on uh, a choice of which missions to do and, and how, to, um, how, to, uh, how to actually go about do the missions. Uh, problem solving, critical thinking. Uh, in the latter parts of the competition, a lot of time management. Um, and there are also uh, missions that we introduce, which are just all about creativity. If it's drawing or if it's, uh, um, we had some cool uh, domino missions where students would just uh, create uh, lines of dominoes and then uh, 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 have the robot uh, drive backwards and, 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 and get all the dominoes to kind of collapse. So that was something just uh, uh, to create a creative break and we gave, we gave prizes uh, to, to the students that were kind of showing nice code on, and, and nice creativity in those, in those challenges. Um, our, our software has been uh, uh, given a lot of, uh, 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 you know, very prestigious awards, including Best of Show of ISTE in 2018. Um, so we're proud of, of, uh, of being uh, uh, awarded those or, or finalists and some of the others. But uh, uh, it's a great indication for us that, that uh, others are thinking alike about what we've, uh, what we've uh, developed. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about the competition structure um, and uh, define a little bit the, the outline. Um, so uh, there, there are uh, four different parts to the competition. Uh, we start with uh, online or in-person professional development, which is probably the most important uh, uh, part because uh, the teachers um, are the, uh, I would say, uh, uh, the ones that help the most in encouraging students to, to sign up. And once students are signed up, uh, uh, teachers can let go and students will continue from, from there. Um, but uh, uh, it's important for teachers to, to uh, be on board, to understand uh, uh, the objective of the competition, um, to, um, to understand that the software and all the missions are not intimidating, that's something that they can do even uh, if they don't have uh, uh, experience. We go through the rules of the competition and we go through regulatory uh, issues such as COPA uh, in order to make sure that everybody understands what needs to be done and, and what the software uh, supports. Um, then we have um, two phases which are all online and, and absolutely virtual. So the first is called bootcamp. Uh, and I'll move on to the next slide just to describe that. So this is, um, this is a, a kind of a training uh, a session where uh, the, the competition begins, but it's not the actual competition. It's more of a training towards the competition. And um, students will go through missions where they are guided 
and they have a lot of uh, scaffolding, so pop-up balloons and, and different hints and tips. And uh, um, uh, through, the, through these missions, they will uh, uh, be able to, to kind of gather the basic skills that they need in order to succeed in the more advanced missions. Um, what's, what's important to note here is that the boot camp is, um, takes place over a period of three to four weeks. And the whole idea is, is, is that they're not working uh, uh, kind of full capacity throughout this period. It's only a workload of about eight to 10 hours, but we do this uh, in order to allow flexibility. So again, if, if somebody is having, uh, uh, I don't know, soccer practice or somebody else is involved in, in, in dance lessons, they will still be able to find the time to do this if it's in study hall or if it's in a, in a dedicated STEM class or in their after school club. Uh, they can find the time to do eight to 10 hours uh, of work during this uh, period of time in order to um, gain those, uh, um, those basic skills. Uh, what we measure during boot camp is uh, inclusiveness. So we encourage schools to sign up as many students as they can. That, that is one of the objectives. Um, we, we measure diversity. So we want to see a, a high level of, um, of uh, female participation. We encourage uh, uh, peer mentoring, uh, so getting students that, that are kind of moving ahead faster to help others. Um, and we also encourage teacher involvement because we, we think that once teacher, teachers uh, try this out, uh, they also, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, feel more comfortable with STEM and with uh, coding and robotics and will feel uh, um, uh, more comfortable uh, leading their classes and encouraging uh, the students. So next, um, after we finish uh, qualify, after we finish boot camp, we have qualifiers, and this is where the real competition begins. Uh, the, the 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 time period here is a little bit tighter, so it'll be ten to twelve days. Um, and uh, here, missions are slightly more complicated, and uh, uh, the workload is more or less the same as in the boot camp. And the idea is to start uh, uh, gaining as 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 much as many points as possible. Um, and to uh, qualify uh, um, to the finals. So all the teams are now super excited and, and, and geared towards uh, doing as many missions as they can. And uh, this is where the, 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 the leaderboard part kicks in and everybody is super excited about this. And then from the qualifiers, we have, uh, we're led to an in-person full day event, which is the, the, the finals. We try to, uh, uh, we work with uh, various different hosts, usually universities that uh, host the, the final events. We try to invite as many students as possible um, and uh, 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 get them to, uh, we, we throw kind of challenges at them uh, there and then at the finals. So it's the first time that they're gonna see these challenges. And uh, um, uh, it's a super exciting day. We also involve uh, parents, families, uh, that come, we have them usually tour the universities, so to get more information about uh, different STEM uh, pathways uh, that students can, can go through. Um, we have people from industry come in and talk about the importance of STEM in their careers and how it led them to their jobs. Um, uh, so, so these are great things that students are, are exposed to. And I, I think the most important is just to be part of a competition like this because you really have to think on your feet, to strategize, to work under pressure, um, and, and, and it's, a, it's a great experience. So we've seen uh, super performance from, from, from uh, students throughout this, um, throughout this uh, 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 finals events, and uh, uh, we, we've had deans of, of computer science and deans of engineering come in uh, and look at some of these middle schoolers and, and, and some high schoolers, and, and they, they were just you know, astounded by, by the level of concentration and, and of their achievement. It, it was really nice to see how, uh, how the people from the university were impressed with uh, uh, the level of intensity of, uh, um, uh, of, of the students. So I want to um, share a, a quick video that will just recap uh, um, most of what I've said in, 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 a, in some pictures and, and videos from the live competitions that we've had. So this will kind of be uh, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, a way for you to experience this. 
What is the cyber robotics coding competition? It's about really engaging in the challenges that we're putting at the kids. It's like a video game, but it's still more fun and gives me a challenge to do. This is just a nice way to add in coding in a fun competition way that all students were able to participate in. Just because it helps me understand more about coding my own robot. It was really awesome. It's friends working together, coding an actual robot. It is a lot of fun. The Cyber Robotics Coding Competition is an online competition where students from all over the world explore the world of STEM in a fun and exciting way using 3D virtual robots. CRCC uses a gamified, level-based approach to keep students engaged. The competition is easy to implement and flexible. All you need to get started is a computer and a browser. During the six to eight week program, students are immersed in STEM and computer science as they learn to program robots and take part in fun and exciting mission simulations. The competitive and friendly environment helps develop 21st century skills such as problem solving, computational thinking, communication, collaboration, and teamwork. The inclusive and equitable nature of CRCC breaks down diversity and gender barriers Nearly half of the competitors are girls. More than one-third of participating schools are rural. And in 2018, 38% of competitors were from schools without computer science classes. CRCC is easy and fun for teachers as well. The program needs no special training, hardware, or software, and includes instructions so teachers with or without STEM experience can mentor a CRCC team. During the first season alone, over 100,000 students across the globe enjoyed this exciting tournament and were given access to the amazing world of STEM. Shift your school's approach to STEM. Join the upcoming season of the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition today. So this is uh, this was our video. I hope you you liked it. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity just to kind of uh, quickly point out again our our, our sponsors: Oracle Academy, Escawa, Cisco, NBT Bank. Uh, some of our partners, uh, um, STEM organizations. Uh, so we've had Girls Who Code, we've had uh, Code VA, we've had 4H. Um, uh, I mentioned the uh, Air Force uh, Association. I mentioned NASA. Uh, a lot of the universities that are working with us are, you know, have taken kind of a central role in, in, in helping either with their outreach uh, and, and also hosting the, uh, the competition. So they've been uh, a lot of help and uh, um, a great relationship to have in, in, in giving the, the, the students motivation uh, uh, to kind of aspire to, to, to be invited to, to the finals. Um, and I want to take a, a last minute just to uh, point out before we go for questions, uh, what what's next and, and what are the uh, possibilities that I want to encourage you. So one, uh, you're, you're uh, invited to try Coder Z uh, yourself or with students for free, and there's a link for that. Um, uh, you're invited to sign up for the CRCC pre-registration link and get more information um, as we uh, give more announcement towards our next season. Uh, happy to uh, communicate with you if you would like to become a CRCC partner and help us uh, promote this in your state. Um, so those are um, kind of uh, things that I wanted to point out. And then uh, related to the ISTE event. Uh, um, so we're going to have a mini CRCC for teachers at the Pennsylvania ISTE Pavilion. And uh, you're invited to come there. And, and there's going to be more information about that. It's not uh, it's something that has to uh, come out in announcements. We're going to have a panel discussion uh, of organizing CRCC to promote STEM um, with uh, uh, several administrators from West Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, and from New Hampshire. And you're invited also to come meet us, uh, the team in our booth in ISTE. So I will uh, conclude here and, and, and be happy to answer some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, it took me a little bit to uh, to unmute myself. Um, so Graham has been um, typing all of those links and all of that great information in the chat box. Um, 
And also I just wanted to point out that I added a note that we will be uh, emailing all of the registrants, the recording, um, if for some reason you don't receive that email, because it's happened in the past, um, we'll be posting it in um, SD Connect for the STEM network. We'll, I'm sure, be tweeting it and um, also posting it on our website. Um, so please, please, please do stop by and meet the team um, at the Coder Z booth. 1962 uh, and if you're able to visit their panel session um, learn more about it I don't remember that information but Graham might be posting it shortly yeah oh thank you um, it's on Wednesday at 9 a.m. so schedule it in there um, are there any questions? Graham did a wonderful job answering them. There were some awesome questions. Um, any other questions? Ben will be on the panel. <laughs> Jared says it seems like a really neat platform. Thank you for sharing. Um, how does the platform MPD actively encourage teachers or districts to be more inclusive and equitable through coding and robotics? Um, so what suggestions do you maybe have for a classroom teacher? So, uh, so the, the, um, uh, the idea is really um, uh, to, to um, offer this to, uh, to all students and um, uh, um, and the ability uh, as a school, uh, regardless of uh, again the, the 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 classes that are in the schedule, the courses that are already kind of uh, been uh, predetermined, to have an activity that every single student can uh, um, can work on is something that um, basically uh, opens the uh, 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 from an exploration point of view. Uh, uh, gives opportunities to students that would not otherwise have uh, access to robotics. And uh, through this, they can learn, uh, they can experience, they can explore and, and make a decision if this is something that they uh, like to do. Uh, it's something that they can do on their own. We've seen students that have done this uh, in a, in a self-directed way. The, the, the software really uh, supports it or they could do it with uh, um, uh, you know, the great help from, from a teacher that is encouraging and, 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 and uh, 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 kind of motivating the students uh, behind the scenes to, uh, to continue with this. But uh, 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 from, from, from a numbers perspective, you know, th there's no doubt that doing this and having uh, the easy access to this uh, platform, uh, you're able to get much more exposure and, and, and many more students in, involved. Um, Patricia asked if you're going to be there on Sunday. Um, I am not sure right now. I, I don't remember uh, the travel plans, but uh, if, if you want to drop me an email, I'll be happy to, uh, uh, to coordinate some time either there or, or you know, to be able to, to talk otherwise. Okay. Um, and Graham is addressing a question about um, how to get Coder Z in their district. I just reposted your email address. Um, oh, and Graham says that he gets there on Sunday. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, I think this is Suzanne, her name's cut off. I am a K-12 technology coach for our school board. What types of resources are available to help support teachers? So um, we have, uh, we have a teacher's guide that kind of lays out the entire uh, um, uh, um, format of, of how the curriculum is built. We have pacing guides. We have uh, suggested solutions for each and every uh, mission. Um, there are um, uh, different professional development uh, opportunities that, that we uh, offer. Um, uh, there are um, uh, um, help uh, 
um, help desk or, or a knowledge base in the software itself that every single uh, item that, that you need help with is, is something that uh, you have access through the software to uh, uh, definitions and videos uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, you know uh, a kind of uh, uh, help on how to put code around a specific topic and also we have a support desk in our office that is open uh, uh, in, in business hours which teachers are more invited to call uh, this has been one of our greater assets throughout the years is being there for teachers and, and just uh, you know taking a phone call it could be on something technical or it could be just on how do I explain this or what do I do there or how do I solve this Awesome, thank you. And Suzanne thanks you as well. Um, Ed says, thank you for CRCC. It's an amazing program to promote digital equity and access. He's gonna give it a try and let his district know about it. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, uh, I just scrolled up. Jared is um, is the one who asked about um, how the platform and PD encourages inclusive and equitable instruction. Um, and he said, thank you for responding. I appreciate it. I agree that access for all students is important. Um, okay. Uh, Suzanne says, thank you. And Kim says, I'm excited to try it. I don't think we have any more questions, but if you do have any questions, um, we are freely distributing Ito's uh, email address. There it is again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're just gonna put it all over the internet. Um, so feel, I'm, I'm just going to say feel free to email him because I won't be able to answer your questions. But uh, <laughs> yes, have a great evening. Um, thank you so much, uh, Ito and Graham for um, having this webinar with us. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, thank you. Looking forward to seeing uh, everybody at ISTE. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, a little bit more than a month. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.